but the doctor used to have a black bag and they go <laughs> to your house. A bottle of ether? And a bottle of, yeah, what is that? Uh, that Cider medicine, house rules? What was that medicine that they all the people took our, our previous generation? It's, it's the ether. It wasn't ether. No, it was like the... Get addicted to it. What was, no, it was like a spoonful of like... It wasn't ether. Penicillin? Not penicillin. It was like a cough syrup, but it was like... Spoonful of medicine? Yeah, that's right. I don't no. know. But nonetheless, it's like doctors used yes. to come and visit yes. right, your house. Yeah. And there was no medical record. It was like, what was ever that knowledge that It was on paper, had. yeah. Yeah, it was in his head. It yep. was in the- Hi, everyone. This is Unlimited Access. My name is Levi. I'm Shannon Ellsworth. And today what we're going to talk about is a bigger, broader belief. One of the things that you and I have been talking about for the last few hours is while you are passionate about Ursaman, the software, the app, and what that's going to do, there's just a bigger problem in healthcare in the United States. I think from a non-healthcare person, we like to think of it as Americans are more unhealthy than they used to be. And that may or may not be the case. I don't think that's what you and I have been talking about. The way you're talking about it is this idea where the patient doesn't – we're trying to give the patient more responsibility for their health, but they're not giving the tools or the ability to take more responsibility for their health. And there's this idea of like where the physician or mm-hmm. the doctor or the hospital or the nurse or whoever is kind of like possessive about that care right so one of the things we talk about all the time is like let's say like um your healthcare data right and getting access to that data it's it's sitting at the uh the hospital and they're trying to use patient portals or whatever but it's still like possessive like they're not giving us that and you've been using this word architecture Mm -hmm. so that's my naive way of explaining it i know i didn't articulate it very well can you just take a few minutes to just dive deep explain what you mean by healthcare architecture and and basically this bigger problem in the US when it comes to healthcare. Yeah, that's a loaded that's a loaded question. So I will try to do it in just a few minutes. So yeah, so we want to give patients. So this started because of my own personal experience, helping my mom and frustrated. I needed the data to help her get care. That's the emotional side. Um, but when I dug into it and I'm busy telling investors now, you know, hey, what's the bigger picture? of why this is, why I'm so passionate is beyond just that, right? I mean, that's what gets you up every day when people send you notes, caregivers and patients send you notes about, hey, I need help. Um, But at the same time, the providers all told me the same thing. They were just as frustrated. So I don't know that it's possessiveness as what I have really come to believe in the last couple of months as I look at it, is we have a legacy architecture built on the way healthcare was 20, 40, 50 years ago, which was acute care. And, and everything sits in a building and they hold on to that data because that's where you get your care and it, that it's optimized for value there. Um, let's, uh, let's make sure we articulate what data we're talking mm-hmm. about. So I think the, the simplest way we say are medical records, but there's like also so blood work more. and some other things. What, what, well, what, what are some of those there's, data? There's billing data. There's, you know, patient movement data. There's... I mean, when you look at traditional patient data, it's not just records. It is, in fact, a whole operational side of a hospital or a doctor. When you go in, they have a system to make sure that you are safe. It is built around patient safety. Um, so it's it's in, there's also insurance and claiming and financial data, and it's all jumbled in this thing called a medical record, which is why it's very hard to share those because there's all this other personal data in there that can't be shared. So it really is a difficult thing. It's not possessive so much as not understanding the tools to be able to share that data in a way that's, that we as patients want that data. We only want a certain piece. If you saw what we pulled when we pull data, it's gobbledygook. 90% of it is stuff that nobody would understand. You don't want that. Well, it's a database, right? Mm-hmm. We're saying the word architecture, but even what I know mm-hmm. about databases is there is kind of like that key record. Right. So let's say, for example, um, a person's key record could be their social security number. Mm -hmm. And so every piece of data, whether it be, again, your medical record from what the doctor's note said when you made a visit to your insurance to whatever else, that's all tied to that key, which in my scenario is your social security number. Right. But it could be your name, whatever it is. But that's that. And if I'm hearing you correctly, is like this whole system is set up where if I punch in that key. All of the data comes out. Levi Spires or, you know, my social security number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I punch that data in, yeah. All that data comes out. Yeah. 
Okay. So now going back to this architecture and everything's built around that architecture. Right. Keep going from there. So, yeah. So now we've moved to chronic illnesses being the biggest problem. So 180 million people have, and I might be overinflating that, so don't anybody, not overinflating, but it's 180 million that we'll have by 2030 will have at least one chronic illness. 66 million have three or more. Chronic illnesses mean you need to maintain them. The bulk of the work is on the patient. So it's really important that only the patient data that you need is pulled out of that and shared and moved to a different piece instead of being held inside the provider because the provider, who historically was the primary driver of health, Mm -hmm. has now shifted to the patient. And the numbers, they say 60, 20, 20, 60% is dependent on you, 20% on genetics, 20% on the doctors. In chronic illnesses, that 60% is really important. So you have to arm the data. And that's that's changing the architecture of what is a traditional healthcare plan, which is you come into the hospital or the doctor and you cycle around in here, and now we're reaching out. That's why you hear remote patient monitoring and wearables and all these things are coming up because what's going to impact your health is all the data that happens outside when you're away from that doctor. And that's why changing where that communication happens from inside that building to in between you and that patient is really critical. Well, you know, I think the way we were talking about it though is um, like who is responsible for your health, right? And, or my health. And when we as Americans, right, Mm -hmm. got sick, we want to go see the doctor. Yeah. Or we have diabetes or whatever it might be. We, we, we want to go to the doctor to get better. And what, the way you're making it sound is like, it's kind of like, no, you're back in charge of your health and you're responsible to take care of your health more. And that's for a myriad of reasons, whether it's doctors are overworked, there's not enough access to doctors, or whatever, whatever it might be. Quality of life. It doesn't matter. At the, at the end of the day, you have to take control of your health. Yeah. And this is where the problem therein lies is I can't. I mean, I could I could take care of my health. Like I can exercise. I can I can eat right or whatever it might be. But so much of my health is now tied up in that architecture, in that hospital system. Whereas, like, if I wanted to do something, I I I kind of can't because that data exists in there. I'll give you a good example. Right. My blood work. Yeah. If I go get my blood work done, um, for my annual checkup, I don't have that data. I mean, they, 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 right. now it's in a patient portal to some extent, but I'm trying to think of when I might use that blood work outside of the doctor because I don't have any use for that data now, but let's pretend for a second here. I needed that blood work data. Mm-hmm. Going and getting that data is not easy. And even though it's in a portal, it's still not easy. And I definitely don't understand it. I definitely, right. I can, I can right. even, if I, even if I don't need that, I don't, I don't understand what that, that blood work means. I don't know if it's good or bad. I just have blood work. Well, and that's part of the challenge of, right. I think, where doctors struggle because if they share too much data and you don't understand it, you could be like, oh, my God, I'm dying. Right? Yeah, that's, WebMD. Yeah, that, yeah and WebMD. They've actually come a long way. I have looked at their, their, their information. It's actually pretty phenomenal. But the way you self-diagnose is still just as terrible. But, yeah, if you get too much, and, and this is the thing, is people are Googling no matter what. That data is out there. So now it's about making sense and them educating and understanding what to look for, what's important. That's why you have things like glucose meters that tell you where your A1C is, and you can say, hey, if I eat this, it changes the way my system works. Because what happens with chronic illnesses, it's not an immediate over time. That's why blood work actually is good. You may not understand it, but you you know if you have diabetes in your family, well, then you'll watch your you'll watch certain things in your blood level to say, am I, you know, do I have to watch this? That's about accountability for the patient. Mm -hmm. And so it's not the doctors don't want to share it. It's that it's shared in all these silos. Now you can't see, are you building a problem? Are you, are you right? Or do you know that you're getting hit? People are getting surprised and then they want help from their doctors to explain what that means. And that's where I say communicating outside the building versus coming in to find out people get sick. They come in and they say, give me a pill. You can try a pill. Listen, a lot of people are on cholesterol meds, um, things like that. You can try pills, but at the end of the day, your quality of life and your health is going to be dependent on you taking control. And how do we give you control? And the providers want that too. They don't not want it. I just don't think they've been given the tools. And I think it's a big architecture change, which is what we were talking about before, is I think it's a big arch- – it's not a big architecture change. It's an operational change that, you know, is going to take some work. Can we go back in time to a time before you and I – um, needed healthcare. Maybe, maybe we, we were yeah. very, very young kids when this took place. But the doctor used to have a black bag, 
and they go <laughs> to your house. A bottle of ether? And a bottle of, yeah, what is that? Uh, that Cider medic- house rules? What was that medicine that they all the people took our, our previous generation? It's, it's the ether. It wasn't the ether. No, it was like the... Get addicted to it. What was that? It was like a spoonful of like... It wasn't ether. Penicillin? Not penicillin. It was like a cough syrup, but it was like... Spoonful of medicine? Yeah, that's right. I don't no. know. But nonetheless, it's like doctors used yes. to come and visit yes. right, your house. Yeah. And there was no medical record. It was like what was ever that knowledge that It was on paper, had, yeah. Yeah, it was in his head. It yep. was in, that, in the doctor's head, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, just trying to put two and two together. It's it's really a big challenge. Well, and and again, back yeah. then, population doctor to patient ratio wasn't as big. You didn't require four visits a year, where like patients even in the eighties, nineties only had one appointment a year. Now they need four times six, seven, eight doctors because they've got all these chronic illnesses. That's where you see this exacerbation of. The problem is these patients are in and out so much more now, and you have to have a, a – you can look at uh, diabetics. Just a diabetics doctor calendar is like 12 appointments a quarter. Oh it is gosh. a full-time job, and there's a picture that they show a diabetic, and their 90% of their brain is all on how they eat their sugars. It's a complete body struggle, and then 5% on quality of life <laughs> because oh that's gosh. all time they have left. So everybody's focused on how do we, like, that's one of the big things that we thought about was how do we help shrink some of those little parts that take over their brain, which is all this data and being able to manage it. And how does it help them make not better choices, but help, but want to feel like they have more control because it also leads to depression when you don't. So there's a lot more to that. What I'm hearing you say is you wish doctors use leeches still. Correct. (laughs) That would be perfect. I wish we could go back to when the doctor showed. My dad still says it. Shannon, back in the day, they used to show up in the office. I'm like, yeah, now it's on your phone, and they're expecting you to take control of your health because right. you are the only one who can make a difference. And that's the hard part is the tools have to be enabled so that you can. And people have to want it, like you say. I always yell at you about you know, not wanting your records. I'm like, you better want them. It's going to sneak up on you. It's going to sneak up on you. Well, um, we did keep it pretty short, especially because we recorded a whole five minutes before I hit record. <laughs> so Good. Good. We, we had a chance to do it. So again, my name is Levi. This is Ursa Men's Unlimited Access, where we believe that people, humans, every one of us makes better health decisions when uh, we have access to all of our information, all of our data, all of our records, and we have all of the education right there at our fingertips. So thank you so much. Thank you.